Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Coder Snacks. Today, we're going to talk about balanced brackets. Let's get started. How many times have you been writing some ridiculous line of code, missed a bracket or paren, and gotten our favorite syntax error? Today we're not going to find out how that works, but we're at least going to write something that might warn us in advance. As always, let's ask some questions first. What kinds of brackets should we be expecting? What sizes of strings should we handle? Should we be expecting other non-bracket characters? For our problem, we'll assume that we're only handling parens, square brackets, and braces. The string may be large, megabytes in size, and the only characters will be the three different pairs of brackets. First, let's look at a couple examples and see if we can figure out a solution. Looking at this example, we might think that we could start with the first and last characters and repeatedly remove from both ends, but that doesn't work. This example is balanced. And this example is also balanced. If the ends don't work, what about the middle? At the center of a balanced set of brackets, there must be one or more pairs of neighboring matched brackets. We can iteratively remove matching pairs that are together in the string, and if the string remains at the end, we know our input isn't balanced. Let's give that a try. The code is simple. We repeatedly replace pairs of parens, braces, and brackets until either we have an empty string, or performing the replaces doesn't change the length of the string. If the string is empty, the string was balanced, otherwise not. We make some sample tests, and it works as we expect, but when we add a case with a lot of parens, it takes a long time to run it. Why? What's the runtime complexity of this code? It's O of n squared in the worst case, where n is the length of the string. The worst case is that we can only remove one pair each time, and we have to do O of n work in the replaces to find the pairs. One pair each time means we'd need n over 2 loops to finish, and with O of n work per loop, the solution is O of n squared. We could improve the efficiency by not using three replaces, but we still wouldn't be better than O of n squared with this approach. Let's look at something different. When we write code in a language such as Java, how do we know that our code doesn't have balanced brackets? As we're entering different levels of enclosure using various brackets, we have to make sure we're using the same closing bracket as the scope we're closing. We know here, for example, that if I want to close this completely, I need to go in order through what I've already opened, most recently opened first. What if we have a data structure that, when we enter a level, we record it, and when we leave a level, we make sure the bracket is the same as the closest opening bracket? We can use a stack for this purpose. What is a stack? It's a list-like data structure where you can add items to the end of it, or push, in O of 1, and remove items from the end, or pop, in O of 1. This behavior is called a LIFO, last in, first out, and you can imagine it like you're stacking things on top of each other. It's easy to get the top thing in a stack, but more difficult to get the middle things. For example, here we push foo onto the stack, and it goes on the bottom. Then we push blah onto the stack, and it goes on top of foo. When we pop from the stack, we get blah back, and it's removed from the stack. This is in contrast with a queue, which is first in, first out, or FIFO, like when you stand in a line. For our purposes, we want a stack. When we close a scope, we want to know what the last opening character we used was. Stacks and queues don't often get a lot of thought while coding, but they're quite common. Think about the undo function in a text editor. This is usually implemented by making a stack of actions which you pop and reverse to undo. Another example we use all the time is recursion for the call stack. When we go into a function, the interpreter puts information on a stack, and when you leave the function, that information is popped off of the call stack. Also in Python, when there's an error, you get a printout of the call stack with the most recently called function at the bottom. Finally, if you need to implement recursion iteratively, you can often do it by using a stack. How do we implement a stack in Python? Just use a list. Yeah, doing programming interviews in Python is kind of cheating sometimes. Python lists have a pop method for getting an item from the end of a list. There's no push method, so you'd have to use append, which just adds to the end of the list. Unfortunately, there's no way to add a method to a built-in, so just use append. How will we use the stack for this problem? 
Every time we see an opening bracket, we'll push it onto the stack. Every time we see a closing bracket, we'll pop an item off the stack and see if it matches. If so, we keep going, and if not, we return false. Additionally, if we ever pop an empty stack, or if there are items left on the stack at the end, we know the brackets are not balanced and we'll return false. Let's write some code. We'll initialize a stack and iterate through every character in our bracket string. If we see an open character, we push, or append, the item to the stack. Otherwise, we're seeing a closing bracket. We first check if there's something on the stack. Popping from an empty stack gives us an error. If it's not empty, we'll pop, and check the opener we popped matches the closer we're seeing. If not, we return false. At the end, if we have an empty stack, we'll return true, otherwise, we return false. We run our test cases and see that they all still pass, and additionally, the long parentheses one now runs instantly. What's the runtime complexity of this code? For each character, we do a constant amount of work. This algorithm runs in O of n. Since we have to look at the entire string, this is the best we can possibly do. Another great thing about the stack version of this algorithm is we can use it on a stream of characters instead of needing the whole string in memory at once. This makes it useful, for example, for checking large files. Stacks and queues seem somewhat boring as far as data structures go, but they occur frequently, so make sure that you're familiar with them. Here are some further challenges for you to consider. Modify this to handle other characters. You could make sure that greater than, less than are balanced as well, or other characters like pipe that would be the same for opening and closing. You could modify this to handle groups of characters that signify opening and closing, like, say, the words begin and end. Modify this to handle characters that are not part of what we're checking for for balance, like, for example, code statements. Along with that, you might also try handling strings. Putting a bracket in a string constant shouldn't trigger stack pushes or pops. Another common stack interview problem is making an RPN, or postfix, evaluator. Next time, we're doing another live video. Write a function that takes two numbers and a range of bits and sets all the bits in the second number any time a bit in that bit range is set in the first. I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, things I've missed, or problems you want answered or covered, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, it would be great if you liked the video, subscribed, or both. I really appreciate it. See you here next time on Coder Snacks.